Hi everyone and welcome back. Um, today it's going to be a simple little tutorial on how you can determine what button or what element in reality has been clicked upon within your web browser control. So this is how we basically can make a seamless experience between what you're displaying uh, through HTML through the web browser and your VBA. So basically to catch mouse clicks and then react to them. Um, for instance, an example of this that I could have used would have been for my webcam uh, web browser control uh, setup. So I could have left the buttons in HTML and when someone clicked on them, captured the fact that they've been clicked and then reacted through VBA to capture the image, etc. I chose another route. I did it all directly through VBA, but it could have just as easily been done using the technique we're going to show and discuss right now. Um, it's a two-part process. So let's open up here a demo. Um, what did I press? So let's just quickly navigate to my blog, just because I have it set up. And it always comes back down to you need to know your HTML. So you need to know what you're trying to capture, obviously. So are we trying to capture the elements ID? Are we trying to capture the name, the class, the style? You can get any attribute you want. Now, why is this not loading? Because I have a typo. There we go. OK, so we have a page here. Now, what I know factually is that this guy here has a name, this button has a name, and this button has an ID, okay? So right now I have it set up to return the name of the element that gets clicked. So if I click on this, I'll get submit. If we right click and we inspect it, and remember there's a bug here, so we actually need to do that process twice. You'll see we get brought down to here, and the name was indeed submit. I'm going to make one quick tweak to my code. We will look at this in detail in two seconds. And now we're going to reload this and it gets updated with the proper code. And now I'm going to come down on this guy. I'm going to click on this one. And you get the YouTube YT button. And if we bring up the inspect, you'll see here the ID is indeed YT button. So as you can see, you can use this to retrieve anything you want. Right now, I'm going to show you two examples where we're doing ID or name, because typically when we're talking about clicking buttons, that's what we're going to be trying to capture is which button was clicked. So therefore, normally you're going to compare it either against the ID or the name. Typically, realistically, you should be doing it against an ID. Every element, especially buttons, should have unique IDs on a page, and therefore it should be reliable to use as a comparison method. Um, that said, not all websites, not all web developers are created equal, so uh, you need to evaluate the page you're going to be analyzing. But that being said, let's dive in and see exactly how this all is put together. Once again, this isn't complex. It's just a question of knowing what you need to do. So. You'll see on this page, well, I have a resize. That's not important for the, our discussion today. The web browser control itself has two events. When the form or the, the web page, sorry, completes, it's loading. So it's fully rendered to the user and now available to be worked with. And then whenever someone clicks on the page. So let's just look at the document complete. Um, the document complete I am using simply and solely to inject code into each page that is loaded. Why? Well, we want to be able to capture when clicks occur. And as such, when somebody clicks it, we want to capture the name, the ID, whatever attribute you want. And we need to be able to store that somewhere. We need to be able to then be able to retrieve it. And the way I've found to do that is by creating on each page a hidden uh, input, uh, hidden that as you can see down here. So I, at the at the very end here, I'm creating a hidden input that this code uses to push what has been clicked, basically. Okay, let, let's look at this step by step. 
Um, this is just for my purposes. I want to update what's displayed so you know what page you're on. Fair enough, not important for today's discussion. What we are interested in today is this here, everything below. So what are we doing? It's, it's in chunks. So you have one chunk, you have a second chunk here, and you have a third chunk there. The first part, we're injecting JavaScript. We're injecting a JavaScript function into the page. So we're adding functionality to that page to capture what is clicked and capture the attribute we're after. So how does it work? So we're creating a function, which I named intercept click event. You can name it anything you want. That's the name I chose. In my case, I created a variable called element ID. And I'm also creating another one, which is the target, which will be uh, what has been clicked on basically. Now, then I come down here uh, anything with uh, double slashes is commented out currently. We'll look at that in two seconds, why. But the next executable line is this guy here, where I'm saying the element ID is whatever we've clicked on, target, and it's ID. And then we come down here and we say, go get me on the document, so on that web page, go get me the element by ID named, or should I say ID with a element ID of clicked element and set its value to the element ID that we just identified here. So we're taking here what has been clicked on, grab its ID, and now we're taking that ID and we're pushing it to this, well, what is a hidden input because we're going to use it then to retrieve it from that place because that's the only way we could go about this. So you click on something, we identify what it is by name, by ID, we save that to the hidden box, and then using VBA, we can read back what has been saved, what has been stored, so the ID or the name. And then we come here, we execute and append it to the page. So basically, we create this function and we append it to the page we're viewing. Next, I've created the function. Now I need to create that actual hidden input. So it's the exact same idea. We're creating an input. We're setting it up as being hidden. We're giving it the name clicked event, which is right here, clicked events, the guy we're using. So we're actually creating it right now. And then we append it to the page. So we add it to the page. So we've added our function. We've added our hidden uh, input. And lastly, we come and we add an event listener to the entire page. Whenever someone clicks on that page, we want this function to run intercept click event the intercept click event that we just created so we create a function we create a hidden input and then we tell it whenever someone clicks run that function please so in effect whenever someone clicks on the page it's going to identify the element and it's going to store its name id in the hidden input then i know this sounds a little convoluted but it really isn't when you think of it the second part of it is we also then use the click event of the web browser. And what we do, it's a single line, as you can see, we're able to use the web browser retrieve JavaScript value. And we come here and we say, go get me the element clicked event. Remember, we're using it here. It's the one that we created that stores the ID or the name or whatever attribute you're after in the input box. So we're telling it, go find that hidden input box and return the value. So we're gonna identify what was clicked. And that's all it is. So let's look at this logically for a second. Let, let's not change anything. Let's come back here. If we click here. So the page just loaded. What has happened? If we briefly look at our code here, what has happened is we have injected into it this function that we created. We've injected into it this hidden input, and we also injected or added this event listener. So if things ran properly, and we come here and we do inspect, we should be able to come here and see, as I said, our hidden input clicked event is there, and our script that we created is also present. So that's what that document complete event does. That's all it's done. Now, 
when we click on an element. Now it has to have an ID or a name, otherwise it doesn't work. But right now we're, if you remember, our, right now we're going and getting the element ID by name. We're using attribute name. So if we click on something that has a name, and I don't know if this one does, no, it does not. So let's go back to my website because I know my website has them with names. And we click on one by name. I'm thinking this has a name. So it, once again, if we look at the inspect for two seconds, we scroll down to the bottom because it's the last thing we're doing. You'll see here our hidden click event and our function that we added to the page. Okay, that was done dynamically in real time. Now, when I click on it, it gets me the name. So when I clicked, the event on the page first ran. So it identified the name of the element and saved it to my hidden input. And then the click event within the web browser control then went and read that value and we were able to extract it and now we can work with it. And vice versa, like I said, we could uncomment this one, comment this one out, and now instead of getting the uh, get attribute, the name, this time we'd be getting the ID. So if we reload it, then it re-injects with the update. And now we scroll down to one that has an ID. So this guy here you'll get the ID. And that's how easy it is to change the element you return. All you have to do is redefine what element ID is, and then it changes. So here, element ID, we can use the target ID. But if you want other uh, attributes, then you use the get attribute and you specify the attribute you want. So if we want name, um, I don't know. We could just try something randomly here. I don't know if it's going to work the class. So let's reload it. And let's see what happens. If we click on something, we get no class. There we get a class. Well, actually several classes. And if we do the inspect again, and doing it twice, you will see down here class button and button YouTube class button and button YouTube. So just by changing the name of the attribute, you're able to update what you're getting. But truly, normally for a button, and that's what this is really going to be for most of the time is what did I click on? Was it which button did I click on? You, typically, you're going to be wanting the name or the ID. Um, now, up until now, this will work with anything that is clicked. So it might be overachieving a little bit. It might be firing a little bit too much. And sometimes we want to try to optimize things. In such case, we could restrict. So uncomment, let's say this if section. And we could restrict when this actually runs. And we could restrict it to only run, let's say, with anchors, so links, or perhaps only buttons, or it could be maybe just images. So you can come here and you can restrict things if you need to. So once again, it all comes down to JavaScript and knowing what your page, how it's been designed and what you're trying to achieve. But there's no point, no sense in making this fire for every single element on a page if all you're after is to know which button was clicked on. In such a case, then you uncomment this and just target the ones that have button, right? Don't make it fire uselessly and make your web page continuously running code for no reason. It's just making your uh, computer, you know, work hard for no reason. Um, and th that truly is a hit, guys. It's no harder than that to identify which button has been clicked. So let's quickly wrap this up with another uh, concrete demo. Now, what I'm doing here is if we look at the design of the form, for example, I'm loading a blank HTML page, and it literally is. There's nothing on it because there's another bug with the web browser control that you can't do this without first loading a blank page. But what I'm doing is that I'm using VBA to dynamically add buttons to a page to create the page virtually. But it makes no difference. This could be a real page that we load. Um, it doesn't make a difference. But I just wanted to create something here, as you can see, that when it loads, 
the blank page so there's nothing once it's fully loaded then here i come and i write to that page and i append a first button and the second button then i append our code just like we always did the difference here however is i'm using the if to only target if a button is clicked and if it is clicked then i pass the id otherwise if it isn't a button i'm just leaving it blank so in effect what we end up with at the end of the day it loads the blank then it reads in my code to add two buttons if i click anywhere outside nothing is happening if i click the button i identify the button and I'm reacting to what I've identified. It now knows my VBA is smart enough to know that I clicked the delete button. It is smart enough to know I clicked the save button. So you can do this all day long. It is now completely reactive to what you click on on the page. So this is how you can make VBA and HTML become seamless and work together and now have an interface that works beautifully. Um, this is one way of bringing in, for instance, let's say an HTML menu. You can bring in some really nifty HTML uh, functionalities, visual graphics, and reactive content. And you could use VBA to still interact with it. And your user would never know the difference. But you can now up your game and create some truly amazing interfaces with this, amongst other things. So I'm going to stop there. This video is already a little longer than I originally intended. But as you can see, very easy. It's just a question of injecting a couple tidbits, JavaScript, a hidden element, and then we use the click event to retrieve what our function saves as being the ID, the name, the class, whatever attribute you're after. I hope this is informative. Um, I haven't seen it anywhere else yet. So I'm hoping uh, I'm able to share some new information with the community at large. If you don't mind, like, share, subscribe, leave me some comments. Be greatly appreciated. And it enables me to continue to do this, guys. Have a great day, and we'll see you in the next video.